Salutations, friends and strangers of the interwebs. Welcome back to the channel, Stevie Wonder Woman. I am Stevie, and in today's video, I'm going to give my thoughts and impressions and kind of final review of the Koenig Arius. That's right, you heard me say it correctly, the Koenig Arius. So, as some of you have uh, may have seen in uh, my previous uh, upload from the week, uh, Epic Mail Call uh, Part 1, uh, this was a surprise uh, from my uh, really good buddy, John, uh, from Knife Nerd Reviews. Um, I was expecting to uh, get a first impressions uh, of uh, my Best Tech Tercel that I had sent to him um, to have some uh, modifications done on. And he completely surprised me by including his Koenig Arius. And so I've had it for uh, four or five days now. I have uh, been uh, using it a lot. Uh, by using it, I mean walking around, flipping it. I haven't really put it to task um, out of respect uh, for John. Um, I also have not uh, put this in pocket yet. I got a pouch uh, that when I am walking around with it, uh, when I'm done with it, put it in the pouch. Again, uh, that's just out of respect for John and this uh, beautiful, gorgeous knife. I don't want to take any chances at uh, messing this thing up. Any, I don't want to put any blems on it. I don't want to be responsible for that. So, um, but yeah, I have uh, been my whole drive to Eastern Washington and back. Um, I was basically uh, flipping this thing, messing around with it, being able to you know take a good look at it. And, um, so, uh, for first impressions, um, it's amazing. Uh, this is, many people have already put on, um, uh, YouTube reviews that this is their favorite knife. And, um, I can understand why. It's just, uh, it's an amazing piece of, uh, artwork, really. Uh, these are made in, I believe, Boise, Idaho. Um, and the, the... The work going into these is second to none. I mean, every, just every, this is a simple knife done extremely, extremely well. Um, from just the finish of the uh, titanium uh, scales there, uh, all the knockdown edges and chamfering, um, uh, the, the blade, uh, the grind on the blade, the blasting on the blade, the crowning of the spine, just everything. The action is just, it's, uh, so you hear people say it's hydraulic smooth and it is, it's not fall shut guillotine like that, uh, Evo that, uh, lefty EDC, um, video coming soon on that, uh, uh, sent to me. It's not like that. This is a very controlled fall on the action, which is just, uh, it's, it's awesome, man. So, yeah, um, I don't really know uh, where to start with this thing. It's just, it's... Uh, I, I I heard that it was good, right? Everyone says it's good. Um, John was telling me how amazing it is. And until you have one in your hand, you just don't know. I mean, ergonomics are great. You can see I get a full four fingers on this with my big old double XL uh, hands. Um, and it just, it melts into it and I like it just the way it's, everything is just well thought out and done really well. Um, so what I am going to do here, uh, being that I have never, uh, I've yet to post a top down look at a knife. I am going to practice my editing skills and, uh, do something a little different. And I'm going to switch to a tabletop view, a top down view. And, uh, John said it was okay for me to do a disassembly on this. So I am going to take this apart, take a look at what's going on in the inside. And then, um, I'll wrap it up, uh, coming back with a front facing and, uh, give my, uh, final thoughts on it. So see ya on the reverse side. All right, so here we are now with a top-down view of the Koenig Arius. And um, I just really wanted to show off, again, just how, you know, these scales are not milled. This is what I think is called the PJ, or people refer to it as the PJ. 
in the plain Jane. Um, no milling patterns or anything in the scales. Uh, they're standard uh, anodized blue uh, pivots, uh, screws, um, body screws, and uh, backspacer there. Um, uh, this is, I believe, a bead blasted uh, blade with um, the satin flats on it. Uh, with and the only marking on the whole knife uh, is the Koenig uh, label there. But again, um, it's just everything. All the edges are just completely knocked down. And again, oh, I guess there is another marking there. My eyes can't really see it, but right there, camera's probably not picking it up. I'm going to assume that says M390, and that's a steel marking. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, this thing is extremely light for its size. Um, I think, uh, well, I do have a scale right here. So let me get a quick, um, this thing is very light. Uh, 4.83, uh, 4.83 ounces for a, uh, what is this? A, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half inch knife. Um, I guess that would make it what a one, two, three and a half ish blade i don't know how they actually measure that but uh for its size uh it's extremely light and i know that uh you can already tell um that there are some uh relief cuts uh in in the scale so john did say i could take this apart if i was extremely careful with it which i absolutely will be um i've already checked this is all t8 uh torx uh um, screws. I got my iFixit driver here with my, uh, Wea, Weeha, uh, bit. Weeha! Gotcha bit and check. Um, uh, yeah, T8, uh, the fitment is good, so, um, I don't think I'm gonna have any issues taking this apart. He did say that he might have Loctited it, um, so we'll see how that goes. If it, uh, gives me any problems, I might stop and then this won't be much of a video, but, um, let's see. So, uh, I'm going to back out the pivot screw first. And that is a cat. I didn't point it out, but I already know that that's a capture. This didn't give me any resistance whatsoever. So good there. So he must not have loctited it. Although there is a little bit of residue there. Maybe he did. And it just, yeah. Um, let me back out the other two screws here. Keep these, um, keep track of the screws so I know which ones go where because, uh, John is like myself after talking with him for so long. I know he probably wants the same screws going in the back in the same spot. So I'm going to make sure that those uh, go back into where they came out from. And uh, I'm assuming this is extremely simple construction. Um, yep, popped right off there. Oh, you can already see the, uh, yeah, look how much, uh, how many pockets they got going on there that they've taken out. Um, uh, oh, he does look like he has already, of course, uh, being the shill that he is. Uh, for the big bearing uh, industry, he has already dropped some skiff bearings into there. I don't know what kind of bearings the OEM were. Let me keep track of that. Pivot uh, barrel side there. Yeah, there. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, um, but yeah, uh, the relief cuts that they've done on the inside of here are... I mean, they've taken out about as much space as you possibly can. Um, looks like there's just the one screw that holds the uh, pocket clip in. I'm assuming, I'm not going to take that out, but that must be some sort of a pocket that it rests into there. And then just the one screw, because there's no no play on that screw or that clip for just to have one screw in it. But um, I'm assuming it's a steel lock bar uh, insert. He said something about it rides on titanium. Uh, and it being softer than the steel, maybe that means that uh, the um, washers are also titanium. So I said don't crank it down too bad, or else you can uh, fuck it up. 
Um, I think that's what he said. Um, I'm sure he'll he'll correct me in the comments if I was wrong on that. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything too crazy here. I just kind of wanted to take it apart and see what it looked like myself. So I'm this is the first time I'm seeing it. Um, yeah, uh, again, great construction. Um, can you guys pick up on that? Gen 4 B2. So this is a uh, Gen 4 Batch 2, as I mentioned. Um, again, you can see how that uh, pivot is captured there. It's a D-shaped, not a D-shaped uh, barrel, but a D-shaped uh, pivot head. So it rests right in there. So it makes it not free spinning when you put it back together. Um, let me give this just a quick little wipe down since it's here. Just got a basic little uh, wiping cloth um, because there is the blade is just a little bit dirty little bit dirty and cleanliness is next to uh santa claus right so um yeah give this just a quick little wipe down here um oh damn one of my favorite songs just came on in the background uh, instrumental uh, i'll give the bearings a quick little wipe down i'm not gonna uh john if you're watching this i didn't talk to you before um, this is already looking on the fairly dry side. I'm not going to lube this. I'm going to keep it as is. I didn't really wipe off any of the lubrication anyway. Uh, so I'm going to keep it like that. I think, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it as is. Um, just wiped off the blade there. And, uh, one thing I've also just noticed is that this has an incorporated stop pin into the blade and a, uh, raceway for the, um stop pin to write on instead of having just a removable stop pin and uh, I like that I dig that um, and yes the uh, bearing in the bearing pocket is milled into the uh, scale itself there's no um, uh, cutouts on the uh, blade uh, you can see the uh, detent uh, track there there's a little bit of a detent ramp you can see right there Actually, pretty pretty pronounced on that. Um, that's obviously what helps with the action. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, pop this guy back together now. Um, no Nick Shabazz uh, skills. Uh, I can already tell uh, from the uh, top down view. But again, this is the first time I've really tried. I've messed around in the past. Wasn't good. Uh, so this is kind of the first time in a long time I've tried to really do something like this. But. Um, yeah, we'll see. Messing around with my photo editing skills, so we'll see how I can transition from back and forth. So uh, this should just pop right back into place if I'm lucky. What's the hang up, Stevie? What is the hang up? Okay, feels good there. Obviously, I'm not going to force anything. Oop, pivot's coming out. All right, y'all got to see me fumble with this shit on camera. Okay, now shit's falling back apart. All right, got the pivot in there properly. Let's get the bearing back in there. Is the pivot seated all the way? The pivot is seated all the way, which is good. That's a good thing. Good thing. Some Finding Cannibals reference there for you youngsters. Um, why is this not wanting to go back? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing? Oh, there we go. Nope. Nope. Well, isn't this a Oh, there it goes. Okay. There it goes. I was going to say, isn't that awesome that I can't get it back together on camera? <laughs> um, but I did. Uh, which is a good thing. So here, I'm gonna, not going to sink these down all the way. I'm going to just uh, start them and we will tighten everything up once I know I have uh, the pivot tightened down all the way and it's centered with no blade play. Always spin it backwards first to make sure it catches and then start sinking it down. Again, that pivot uh, head is captured in there, so I'm going to start tightening this. Check the blade. That felt about right. That's solid there. Let's see. Nope, definitely too tight. Definitely too tight. A 
little too loose. Halfway, split the difference. That's good. Check the centering. Centering is dead on. It's spot on. So I am going to, before I check the action, I'm going to go ahead and sink these screws all the way in. All right. Let's see. Yep. Feels just like it did. Maybe back it off just another hair. On camera, dummy. On camera. I think that's it. Maybe a little more. Centering is still there. There it is. That's perfect. So that was the disassembly and reassembly portion of the video. It went way longer than I was hoping it would. Anyway, um... Yeah, I am going to now switch back up to the top facing, front facing, and give my uh, uh, final impressions of this knife. All right, so back up top here. Um, now that I've taken it apart, putting it back together, um, I've spent some good time with it, flipping it around. Um, Listen to the acoustics of it. Just the... Yeah, this thing is just... Uh, it's great. Um, if I had one, one little uh, gripe, it would be about the pocket clip. Um, again, it's not, uh, it's not super bad, but it does stick out a pocket... It's going to stick out of pocket a fair amount there, as you can see. Using my Brown and Ginger Hank. Brown and Ginger, shout out to them. Made in Puyallup, Washington. Uh, one of my favorite Hanks here. Hank reviews coming soon. Um, I think that if they took this pocket clip and they moved it up and they utilized the uh, back screw, the screws that go into the back spacer right here and redesigned it and moved it up, that would make it more deep carry, and that would be more preferable to me. A um, little nitpick, nothing major, uh, it's still fine. Um, so, all that being said, knowing what I know of messing with this, um, messing around with it, $670 knife if you can get it on retail. That's a pretty damn expensive knife. That would be the most expensive knife I ever purchased. Um, so knowing what I know now, um, if I could get this for retail, would I spend that kind of money on that? And, uh, the answer is absolutely. This thing is a piece of work. Uh, it's a piece of artwork and until you handle one, you just don't know. And as a fairly serious knife collector, um, that's the way I think collections naturally progress is towards the higher end. And, um... You know, some of my friends and family that uh, might be watching this might go, are you shitting me $700 for a knife when I can, the gas station sells them for uh, $12.99? Um, yeah, this is a $700 knife that I would gladly pay money for, that, that kind of money for. I won't overpay for it on the secondary, um, but I would pay a reasonable uh, price for this. It's just... The way it feels in my hand, the blade shape, the overall design of it, um, it's just, it's comfortable, it's lightweight, it doesn't carry the greatest, but this would not be a knife that I would carry all the time, although I would absolutely carry this and make it a user. Um, if this was mine, I would carry it. Uh, this wouldn't be a safe queen, as they call them. Um, if I'm going to buy a knife and I'm going to spend that kind of money on it, I'm going to freaking use it. And so, uh, but it wouldn't be, uh, something I would carry every day. Uh, I would want to take good care of it, but, um, look at that action. Just the controlled fall shutness of it. Now, now if I want it to, it'll go home on its own, you know, but 
I'm not using the flipper tab too often, but I do like the flipper tab on it. Nice low profile. Again, just a little bit of jump. The only jimping on the knife is just that little pad right there that gives you enough uh, texturing. Yeah, it's uh, it's just it's great, guys. And I'm sure a lot of you watching that already know that. You've seen um, there's some great videos on the Arius already out there um, that do it much better justice than I ever could um, or can at this point. Maybe some down in the future. I'll get a little bit better, but until then, um, this is just uh, Stevie's take on it, and um, try not to make this video too long, so I'm going to wrap it up with saying, again, thank you uh, to John, Knife Nerd Reviews, uh, this means a lot that you sent me uh, this, I told him, I've taken uh, some pictures that I've uploaded to Instagram, uh, and I sent him some, and I said, it feels like I'm taking sexy pictures of another man's girlfriend, uh, <laughs> um, no, I appreciate it immensely, dude, uh, getting to check out a knife of this caliber for uh, uh, my channel so early on um, is amazing. Uh, thank you to everyone that's been tuning in um, and subscribing and whatnot. I don't remember if I mentioned it at the beginning, but there's been some issues with me trying to figure out how uh, to make my channel more searchable. I know right now if you type in Stevie Wonder Woman, you're not uh, finding it right away. You're obviously finding Stevie Wonder and Wonder Woman videos. Um, there's an issue going on with my URL or it's, I, I don't know. I never thought that I'd have to think of that type of shit. Um, <laughs> starting a YouTube channel. I didn't anticipate any of that, but I'll figure that out eventually. It's not going to stop me from making, um, uh, videos and shooting stuff in the meantime. Um, everyone that's subscribed and liked and comment so far. Awesome. Um, but, oh, again, if there is a problem uh, with you guys finding the channel, now that you're here and if you're watching this, click the notification uh, bell, uh, part of, or the, whatever the button is. And that way, when I do upload, uh, you'll get a notification. You don't have to go searching for it. Um, but again, I'll figure all that out. Um, but yeah, so Koenig Arius. Not the Koenig Arius. The Koenig Arius. So uh, again, love it. Thanks to everyone that's uh, um, given me the love so far. Again, it's truly appreciated. Um, and everyone that hasn't subscribed yet, if you've watched this far and you're not subscribed, fucking shame on you. Subscribe, damn it. Um, no. Uh, again, I don't care how many people watch this. This is more therapeutic than anything. Uh, getting to ramble on about my hobby-ish to strangers on the interwebs. So, uh, yeah, in the meantime, I uh, look forward to uh, putting some other stuff out here very soon. I got a lot of cool stuff in recently that I uh, just got to take the time to film. And, uh, yeah, I will catch you guys all again very soon. Deuces.